Ooh. Ooh. Apparently, this car had a gearbox oil flush uh, not long before I got it, which was only about 1,300 miles ago. Um, yeah, I'm not convinced about that. So this is a Citroen C6 automatic gearbox. It's an Asian Warner unit, which means it's Japanese and therefore it should be really good and just work. It's fitted to loads of cars. It's fitted to uh, Saab, maybe? Volvos, definitely. Vauxhalls, Peugeots, C5, Citroëns, stuff like that. It's fitted to tons of stuff. Um, it's a good box. Six speed, um, heavy, but yeah, they are good. They're good boxes if you keep the oil changed. If you don't keep the oil changed, you get trouble. The reason you get trouble is because the valve block dies. So but automatic gearbox, how does it work? It's a kind of a complex thing. I'll try and give you the basics of how they work enough so that you understand the problem that this had. Um, so basically, a manual gearbox, you've got two shafts and there's a cog on each and they run against each other. They're always running. Gears along the top can freewheel or they can lock. So when you move the lever, that selects which gear locks. And of course, if one of them locks to the speed of the input, it will spin the output. And whichever one locks determines which gear you're in and that determines the speed of the output. And what is basically as simple as that. But automatic gearboxes are quite different. They're not like that at all. Um, the easiest way to imagine it with an automatic gearbox is this is a six speed. So basically you've actually got three gear sets. And each gear set has an output, but two inputs. So the reason it has two inputs is because you can have the big gear on the outside, the three little ones on the inside, and then the middle, right, the output. You can either have the three in the inside of this one ring gear thing spinning, which will spin the output at whatever speed they go round at, or by controlling some clutch mechanisms, you can let the whole big cog these three gears are in rotate as well. So the easiest way to think of that is um, the difference between first and second gear, it's not because first and second gear wouldn't be within the same gear set, they'd be different gear sets. But for it, simplicity's sake, first and second gear in an automatic, um, first gear is you are on a train carriage doing 60 miles an hour. You stood still, looking forward, you're doing 60 miles an hour. If you start walking, you're going faster than 60 miles an hour. And it's kind of how it works. So it's like, the first one still keeps going, but the second one comes in and it speeds things up again. And then third gear would be you start running in the train carriage doing 60 miles an hour. So you now you're doing like 72, depends how fast you can run. It's that kind of principle. It's more complicated than that. But the reason that's important to know is the valve block in here is what controls how those gear sets work. So basically, as I said, there's three of them and they're all the same ratio. It's not like a car, like a, uh, a manual car where you have different ratios. They're all the same size. It's just the combination of which ones are spinning and which ones are stationary that governs the output speed. Um, and the control of which ones are spinning and which ones are stationary is all done by the valve block. The valve block lives in here. And in most cars, in an automatic gearbox, you take the sump off, but on a C6, it's actually on the front of the gearbox. Um, the problem with this gearbox is that the valve block isn't in there because I've taken it out, which I had forgotten. That's embarrassing. Um, so yeah, we can actually see one of the one of the gear sets in there, and like the edge of a clutch there, clutch pack. So the clutches are operated hydraulically. The gearbox creates high pressure, but the direction of that pressure, hydraulic fluid, is governed by the valve block, which is down here. Here is a valve block. Here are solenoids. Um, now it's dripping everywhere. Was it full of fluid or something? This is the one that came out of the C6. So I've actually already changed this. I don't know if it's worked yet, but I've already changed it. Um, so basically the suspension, or the gearbox's ECU in this particular instance, in an old gearbox, it wouldn't have an ECU, but in this car, the ECU controls which of these solenoids opens and closes. And that process, that order, changes the flow. If you open that up inside, it's like the most mental maze you've ever seen. It goes around all over the place. It's like 
slicing through bacteria. Those open and shut, and that changes the direction of the fluid through here. Different fluid, have come, fluid coming out of different ports, operates different clutches in the gearbox, you get different gears. Um, now what happens is I think that one there is the one that does third gear. These solenoids jam, uh, some, or sometimes the bore inside the valve body becomes knackered. No, it's dripping. Yeah, it could be that this is somehow causing the issue where it's once it gets hot, it can't control third gear anymore. Or what is the equivalent of third gear? And then it suddenly wakes up and it comes in with a bang. That's my theory. And it's quite a well-supported one. Nine times out of 10, it is a valve block. So originally I bought a second-hand gearbox. If it turns out to be the valve block, that was kind of a bad idea because I could have bought a new valve block for the same price as I bought this gearbox for. But my logic was that it might not be the valve block. It might be something in the gearbox and therefore I can change the whole thing. This is a done 50,000 miles less than this car. So with this, I could change the whole thing. We'll have to wait and see if it actually works first. I haven't filmed changing it because it was a faff and I just, I couldn't be bothered to film it. Sorry. Uh, my logic is by fitting the second hand valve block, if it helps the car, if it fixes the car, brilliant. If it doesn't fix it, but it does change things, that gives me a clue as to whether a new valve block would sort it because of course there's nothing to guarantee that that one was all right. Although I have got the word of the guy who sold it to me that it drove fine. Um, and he is in the C6 owner's circle. If it fixes the car outright, that's brilliant. And I'll just know that it's done 100K and it'll probably need a valve block properly replacing in the future. And I'll know what to, ha what to do if that happens. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't fix it at all, that's bad. And it probably means the whole gearbox is just gonna need changing over. Um, if it does change it, so if it changes the behavior, changes the fault, doesn't necessarily fix it, but does alter it, it might tell me something. We'll see what happens. So I did clean that valve block out that I've just fitted in this car that came out of that gearbox, cleaned it out quickly, with a bit of brake cleaner and an airline. Um, you can't really do too much with them, to be honest. Um, it's had quite a few fluid changes prior to this. So I wanted to get all the old crap fluid out of it because I didn't want to contaminate my new valve block with loads of old ganky fluid. That's all been done. So now it's going to have new fluid in it. The sump uh, cover on the front there is sealer is going off at the moment. That's, um, that's that job done at the moment. And then I've got other bits and bobs to do with the car. Um, I've got a track rod end to change, another one. And then I've got tracking to do. And previous videos have seen me pratting around with uh, suspension bushes and, and whatnot. The wheels are horrible. The ride is a little crashier than it's supposed to be. And I'm not entirely convinced it isn't to do with these tires. The wheels are wrecked, but I've had a result with these. I bought some new wheels, which I shall show you. New wheels. These are, um, they're actually a set of wheels off a of C5, but um, they did fit them to C6s, the three litre HDI, which didn't have this cool downturn exhaust it had an, a, an oval a, a rectangle excuse me a rectangle either side they look cheesy i don't like them but that's what they had i much prefer that um it had these wheels now the seller guy who sold these wheels didn't realize this and as a result these were quite cheap um because they come off a c5 so they're the same size and everything um the 59 plate technically could have these wheels it wouldn't be this car this car is actually older than the number plate suggests um, because it's a GJ59 car, I'll get onto them another time. But basically, it won't look too out of place. To people who know C6s, it would look a little out of place, but I don't care. I, really, I didn't actually like these wheels. I used to see C6s on these wheels, and I, I didn't care for much at all, to be honest. I thought it looked a bit rubbish, but I just suddenly changed. I think that's when I saw them come up cheap on eBay. Um, but yeah, I think they look all right now. So I'll get these on. Um, after I've got these on, I can do the ride height. I've got to redo the ride height because of the video you've already seen where I've changed the suspension bushes. And in doing that and changing the geometry of the front wishbones, it completely screwed the ride height. And now it drives around like a dragster with its ass in the air. I need to do the ride height after I put the wheels on because the radius on these wheels will be different because they're different tires. Even though the tread may be the same, different type of tire, 
they're different height. Uh, even though the profile is the same, different tire. Trust me, the radius is different. Um, I also need to do the tracking, but I can't do the tracking until I've done the ride height. Um, because uh, otherwise the ride height changing will then change the tracking again. So I have to pick the right order to do all this. So it would be um, wheels off, these ones on, then do the ride height, then do the tracking. Momentous occasion time. This car has had minging wheels on it for too long. Far too long. So now we can get rid. Oh, they're heavy. Uh, eventually, I will just get the new wheels refurbished. They're just, it's just a simple bright silver. Dead easy to do. But uh, yes, I hope these are balanced. They've got weights on them, but. Yeah, that's gonna look good. What do you reckon? Oh, it does make a difference, doesn't it? If anything, it's a bit too bling. <sighs> Time for the back. I couldn't do the track rod end on the near side front because I can't get it undone. It is on there. So that will involve cutting it off with a grinder and making it hot and stress. And that's not happening now. <laughs> Look at that, it was only held on by one bolt. I always used to prefer the older wheels, but, and uh, what I also need to sort out, a bump stop, which I think that's stopped as much as it can, to be honest. These are hellishly expensive and not easy to find. So I bought some from a C5, which seem to be exactly the same. Slightly different, maybe. Should do the job. I think it's the same anyway. Oh no, it's not, it is different. And then that should just as easy as that. That's the kind of repairs I like. Back on with my new bling wheel, which they do look a bit bling actually, they do look a bit shiny. <laughs> Mind you, the old ones are very dull, so it might just be the the transition between them that just takes some getting used to. But the the old ones were quite dull looking. I like the old wheels, but they were just shot. Some of the press cars and the brochure cars had diamond cut versions of them. And they look nice. Not practical because diamond cut wheels tend to corrode if you use them. Certainly if you use them in the UK. There we go. And then that'll be my new bling rims, which are scuffed to buggery. But uh, I'll sort that at a later date. They're not as bad as those ones. Bit of ASMR. Right. Tomorrow, hopefully, fingers crossed. I can't cross my fingers. Hang on. Fingers crossed, that sorts it. It might drive perfectly after this, you never know. I'm not convinced it will. I don't think it's gonna be that kind, but yeah. That's why we're leaving it tonight. Pick it up tomorrow. I shall wash it. If, they, if the gearbox works and it's, I'll get everything else sorted out, I will give it a wash. I will clean it, I will treat it. Because once that's done, I can start using it properly, if that works. So yeah, 750 pound C6, getting near the point where I can nearly say it's done. Because um, it's, uh, it's, it's never been finished. But when it is finished, I can tot up exactly how much it's cost and see if it is still a 750 pound C6. Spoiler alert, it isn't. <laughs>